Saturday, October 21st, 1130 a.m. Mountain Time, 2017. Remember back in May of this year when the farmer from southeast Michigan, Lynn, made a very rare observation on his farm. The man's been a farmer for years. He's very familiar with the outdoors, the ecosystem, the creatures of nature. He noticed one particular creature that was glaringly absent from his farm. And this is in the late spring. He noticed it all through the summer as well. There were no flies on his farm. Any of you that have had any type of experience with outdoor farms, um, the country setting, I grew up kind of in a rural setting in the Midwest. I'm very familiar with farms. This right here would be a smorgasbord for flies. That's free food. There's organic matter in there, plus the feed that he puts down for his ducks and other creatures. No flies? Ah, that's, that's unheard of. But that's what he was seeing. And once I did the video about this uh, rare observation, many of you came forward and said that you were noticing the same thing. A shortage, if not a complete absence of flies, fireflies, honeybees um, from all across the country and around the world. I had one person tell me that they noticed their, uh, they lived in a rural setting near a forest and the squirrels in their localized area where they lived around their home had disappeared. There was one squirrel, well they fed the squirrels every day, and there was one in particular that had a very unique color to its tail and its coat and it was very easy to spot came around for years, had disappeared without a trace. In fact, all of the squirrels had disappeared. And this was too in uh, Michigan, but northern Michigan. The no flies were in southeastern Michigan. And apparently this is a global phenomenon that has been uh, under research and observation for the last 24 years. Over in Germany, they've been doing a study on the decline of insects. Where have all the insects gone? And one of the big ones is, is flies, bees, fireflies, a lot of insects across the board. Disappearances. They have noticed a 78% decrease in insects overall in the past 24 years. And that's from 1989 to 2013. And I'm sure from 2013 to now, that has changed even more. So there is something going on with the insects of Earth. I don't know if, if the insects physically are relocating or just simply disappearing. Or is it something to do with their reproductive process? What could it be? What makes more sense? Let's look at an idea. This is an idea that I have and that I'm just drawn to. It's just a theory. I'm not saying that this is the case. They, they talk about in this article here, and it's a study that they've done um, extensively, and I respect that. They're blaming a lot of it on um, insecticides and uh, urban building and more farm ground taking up the ecosystem for the, the, the insects. So they're moving out of different areas, which very well could be the case. Plus, the insecticides could be um, killing them off. But I have a different theory, and it's just a theory, but here it goes. I think it's got something to do with the larvae, and this is what I thought of with um, southeast Minnesota when this was first brought to me. I thought about it for a long time, and this is what I concluded. At the time, and I'm still going to do it, but I had been doing... Um, and it's something I, I will still do. I just stop because of the angle of the sun right now. It's more south. So the UV is generally lower. I still check it every day. It's been within the parameters. Every once in a while it's up a little high. But um, overall it's not too bad. But you can see here there's over 200, over 200 videos. These are all UV readings that um, myself and Team UV, several people from around the world and across the country, would take ultraviolet light readings every day that is electromagnetic radiation and some days we would find anomalies those days 
um, that the anomalies were the greatest were the days that it was mostly cloudy and the sun would peek out from behind a cloud and the UV would shoot way up. We documented that many times. But overall, the UV was generally pretty high. What if the ultraviolet light was somehow or another sterilizing the egg larvae of these insects or the reproductive organs of these very delicate insects, allowing them or not allowing them to reproduce? Could that be a possibility? What if you were an insect in a very harsh environment, an environment so harsh that at times it's turning red stop signs, new red stop signs, pretty much instantly white, degradating the red paint so bad that it turns white. Something very harsh hit that stop sign and turned it white. The color is just completely absent, much like the insects. That one is in Idaho. This one is in New Mexico. Same thing. It looks a little old. I agree. But nevertheless, there is not a molecule of red paint anywhere on that stop sign. And it faces south, directly into the sun. Here's another one. This one faces west. No red paint. Gone. Vanished. So if something that were this strong or this potent, whatever it may be, came in contact with some delicate larvae of a fly, maybe a, an, an, or whatever type of insect um, that is trying to reproduce, could it sterilize the larvae to where the eggs don't hatch? If it does this type of damage and degradation to the red paint, I would think egg larvae would be no problem. Here's another example. Red paint completely degraded, just gone. Here's another example. This is from Alabama. The one that I just uh, showed you was from Arizona, Alabama. I showed you one from Idaho. The one from Idaho is not an extreme UV environment by any means, but something degraded and damaged the red paint of that sign rather quickly. So could it damage larvae, egg larvae of insects? I would say probably pretty easy. Here's another example. This is from Oregon. Oregon's not known for real super high UV, but yet we saw some high UV readings uh, from Oregon. This is something that I want to share with you that happened just this year, in fact. Um, this is a tree of our neighbor's house. This guy takes immaculate care of his backyard. I've never seen so much as a, a dead weed in his backyard. This tree was fine back in 2016. It was a fruit tree. I'm not exactly sure what kind, but you can see it's totally dead. Something hit it. Something happened, and it. he had to pull it up and, and, and discard it. That's not the only tree like that I've seen. I've seen multiple trees like that. This is an example of a tree facing south. The back half, the south side of the tree, is burnt to a crisp. The front side, the north side, is fine. The back side was hit with something harsh. So if that same strength were to affect wherever the egg larvae may be, of uh, whatever it is trying to reproduce, do you think it could damage the eggs if it could do that kind of damage to a tree? Here's another example. This is in the front yard. Half of the bush was dead. The back half in the shade. This is where the sun set. The sunset sunlight went right through here. And it hit, if you pay attention, again, the neighbor's house. This is a tree in his front yard. Half of it was burnt to a crisp, just like this half of the bush. The other half was fine. Like it got hit with some very intense light. That tree, too, is now gone. The bush is still trying to recover. It has not yet. Here's another example of a tree with a couple of branches. Granted, I know it could be something other than UV, but coincidentally it does face directly south, and these two branches are fried to an absolute crisp. I've seen multiple, multiple examples of that. I've seen it on vehicles, vehicle license plates, even from... Uh, the state of Wisconsin, which isn't known for its intense heat during the summer or winter or its high UV readings. And I've got examples of license plates from Wisconsin that are completely burnt, 
like this sign is just completely gone. So could there be an aspect of our environment that has changed that is causing the insects to struggle, at least from a reproductive standpoint, to where their eggs aren't uh, hatching? They're just simply not making it to that stage because of intense UV. Is it a possibility? Could be. Could it be the insecticides? It could be. Could be a number of things, but this is what I'm leaning towards. But apparently this has been going on for quite a while. It is a global phenomenon. Um, it was noticed here in the States up in southeast uh, Michigan very profoundly when this man's entire farm had no flies on it all year long. So that tells you, and, th and this guy here, by the way, just so you know, he is all organic. He doesn't use pesticides or insecticides on his farm. He hasn't for 20 years, I think he said. So that couldn't be the case in his area here because he doesn't use those types of chemicals. And he's leaning too more towards the UV doing something with the uh, reproductive aspect of these little creatures because when he did see a few flies later on in the summer, they were only in the shade. Ants, on a final note, he noticed uh, there weren't too many ant hills on his farm, and normally he notices very active, busy ants. He only noticed the ants early in the morning before sunrise, and there were very few hills. As soon as the sun came out, what few ants that were there went back underground and stayed there all day. The few flies that he ended up seeing in the, uh, the late summer were always in the shade, never in the sun. So that's why, me personally, I lean towards something in the sunlight. Maybe a little too harsh for the reproductive larvae of these little creatures. Thanks for watching, guys, and be safe out there.